Here with tips for staying safe, Dr. Christopher McGowan. Doctor, welcome back to the show. Hi, Hannah. Good to see you. Thanks Great for having me. Good to see you. Of course, anytime. So it can be tempting to exercise outside during the summer. I like being outside. I like being in the sun. But of course, there are a lot of dangers. Talk to me about that. Yeah, definitely. It's a great time to get outdoors. The days are long. There are so many activities you can do, but we need to be careful, especially if you aren't used to exercising in the extreme heat. Uh, the strain on your body can be significant. Your body can have difficulty keeping you cool. And so then you can put yourself at risk of things like dehydration, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke, which could be life-threatening. All right, so it's humid out there. It's over 90 degrees much of the week, a lot of next week. What is considered too much sweat. When should people get worried? Because some people sweat a lot, some people simply don't. Oh, sweat is a good thing. There right. really isn't too much sweat. That's how our bodies cool down. So I would actually embrace the sweat, especially if you're outside exercising. The key is to keep up with your fluid losses, to stay hydrated. And pay attention if you're sweating profusely and also experiencing other symptoms that could be a sign of something worse, that's when you need to dial it back. And if you're not feeling well outside, how do you know if it's heat exhaustion or heat stroke, doctor? Yeah, absolutely. So heat exhaustion is when your body is really not keeping up with cool, staying cool. That's when your temperature may be exceeding 101 degrees. And signs of that include, well, exhaustion, uh, feeling extremely weak. Your body is really struggling. You can have symptoms like feeling dizzy, high heart rate. Um, nausea, vomiting, headaches. These are signs that you are experiencing heat exhaustion. You need to get into a cool area, cool down. Listen, if you feel like garbage, uh, take it easy, calm down. You're not really going to help yourself. And then the next level would be heat stroke. Now, this takes all of the symptoms of heat exhaustion, but adds uh, central nervous system findings like confusion, altered mental status. This is a true medical emergency. Yeah, we're showing our viewers a graphic right now showing the distinction of what you mentioned between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Very, very useful there. What are the signs that, it, hey, it's time to get back inside? It's just too hot. Yeah, really everything you're displaying there, th these are signs and things we should pay attention to. Listen to your body. This is not a scenario where uh, we want to apply the no pain, no gain principle. Take it easy. In reality, there's no advantage of exercising in the extreme heat. So if you can exercise indoors in an air-conditioned gym, that's probably a better option for you. And there's often a misconception, especially for those trying to lose weight, that uh, you can sweat off the pounds. Look, unless you're trying to meet uh, to make weight for a uh, wrestling match, there's really no reason to sweat off the pound. Stay indoors, stay cool if you can. So I shouldn't wear my sweatsuit and jog in this weather is what you're saying? No, light clothing, light colors. We want breathable materials. This is a situation where less is more is better within reason. Uh, that will help you stay cool. All right, good note. When is the best time of day to exercise outside when you're in the middle of a heat wave? Yeah, so this is really common sense, but we want to stick with the early mornings, later evenings when it's cooler rather than the middle of the day when the sun is directly over our heads. That will definitely help you out. Are there precautions, doctor, that we should be taking when going outside during extreme temperatures? You mentioned light color clothing, et cetera. Yeah, I think one thing to consider is pre-hydrating. So we really want to focus on hydration, but many people forget that you, you can really benefit by pre-hydrating two to three hours even before you go outside to exercise, start the hydration process, fill the tank before you go out, and then really stay on top of your fluids during your exercise. Don't wait until you're thirsty or until after your workout. And Definitely don't drink alcohol. Um, you know, if you're combining alcohol with your exercise, uh, with your workouts, you probably need to rethink your routine. Do electrolytes really work here, doctor? I've been curious about that. Well, the priority is really water. There can be some benefit to electrolytes, but I would be careful with overly sweetened, sugary sports drinks. That's really not beneficial in any way, but really focus on water. Dr. Christopher McGowan, we really appreciate your time. Come back anytime. Thank you so much, sir.